and I'll just set this right. I guess uh, I'll just put it right here if that's okay. I'll okay. make sure to get you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It's December thirteenth, two thousand and nine. I'm Barbara Garrity Blake, and I'm here in Craven Corner. That's talking right. Talking to Mr. James Frazier. Poppy Frazier. Jean, James Frazier. They call me Poppy, but my real name is James. Okay. All right, Mr. Frazier. Well, could you start off by telling us what year you were born and what? I was born nineteen twenty-eight, ninth of November. Okay. And where were you born? Right here. Okay. Where was your house growing up? Uh, the first. Church, you come to coming in here. I used to live there. That's where I was born there. Uh huh. But uh, my daddy married my mother and carried her up here further up to the Fraser Town Road. Uh -uh. It's the Fraser Town Road. Tom Bell's Road. It's Tom Bell Road. Mm -hmm. It's Fraser Town Road, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, I married her, and then I moved over here and bought some land over here. And Mrs. Frazier, what's your name? Nora Frazier. Nora? Mm -hmm. and did, did you grow up in this community too? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Frazier, could you describe to me how you got involved in the Menhaden industry and what job you had? Yes, ma'am. I started 1949 with Lynn, Lynn Murrow, right there, both of them. I was. Pulling ribbon in by hand. There were no power blocks. I was pulling ribbon by hand. And I left from him and went to New York. I didn't fish there. I worked at the Manhattan factory. Damn against New York. But when I left there and come back home, I started with Jimmy. Jimmy Willis. Stayed with him 16 years. And I run the engine for her. You were the engineer? Yeah, on the purse boat. You know, I run the purse boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I run the purse boat. Okay, could you tell me, can you describe that job for me? Yes, ma'am. Whenever we get off on a set and start around some fish, I threw in gear and Jimmy, he was standing on the back of the stern stander. Stand around, and he'd come together and meet like this, make boot on the outside, cabin boot on the inside. And then he threw the tom weight, 500-pound tom weight, old boy, and start to person it back. And I'd sit there and run the engine till he'd get it pursed back, get the neck pursed. The engine that um, propelled the purse boat or that? No. The engine that operated the power. Pers yeah. It, it had a uh, uh, pull in a, what do you call it, a winch. Mm -hmm. Had a winch in it. And he winched it back by there. I'd put out a gear. I'd throw out a gear, but I'd put that winch in gear and then he'd winch it back with roots. Yeah. Okay. So that was the power block. Yes, ma'am. So what was your job before the power block was invented? Uh, running the power block, I was. Mm -hmm. That was the power block. I run the power block. When they would push the net back, I had to take and knock out a gear and get up there and put the uh, power blocking gear in. Okay. And then I'd sit there and run it. I gotcha. But you said that you first started off pulling in the net by hand. Yes, ma'am. So what was that? What was your first job on the crew? Uh... Pulling ball swabbing. Mm -hmm. That's what it was, pulling ball swabbing. You say ball swabbing? Yes, ma'am. What does that mean? The last man on the back. <laughs> See, it was four of us in the bump pile. Ring setter and three bump pulls. And I was the last one on the back pulling ball swabbing. The center was pulling center webbing. And the set of guy here next term pulling webbing from the rings called ring webbing. Okay. And was the webbing different 
Besides where it was, like was the boss webbing particularly no, thick? No, ma'am. It was old. Same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it sure was. And so with Jimmy, you were op you were the operating the engine and that's on, right. the, on the purse boat. Yeah, that's right. And what boat was that? Captain boat. On the captain's boat, okay. Captain boat. All right. And who did it on the mate's boat? Uh, let me see. Well, it's a white fella. I, I don't know his name. Okay. Yeah, sure was. And was that on the um, Taylor's Creek? Yes, ma'am. The whole time? Whole time. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Who was the cook on that boat? Perry. Perry was the cook. All right. He yeah, sure was. And <coughs> what's Perry's last name? Perry's Carter. Okay. He was a Carter. Okay. He yeah. was in Beaufort? Yeah, <laughs> no, he's from Kahookie. Place up here before you get to Cherry Point, you call Kuhuki. Oh, yeah. Do you know that place? I have no idea there was a place mm -hmm. called Kuhuki. Yeah, it is. It's a creek, right? Is it called Kuhuki Creek? Back yeah, there? that's right. They that's have alligators in there. Oh, yeah, that it is. They do. I've they seen do. Them. Yeah, yes, yeah, alligators in there. Plan yeah. on. All right, well, um, Mr. Frazier, could you tell me about um, how important was the Menhaden industry to this community? It really important because most all these boys, that's what they did. Yeah. Sure did. Well, I've always wondered how is it that so many people from here worked all the way in Beaufort when it's a good 15 miles away? Well, some of them had cars mm -hmm. and they'd pick up one another. And that's where we got there. Okay. But it seems like that there, that this Harlow area supplied a lot of men for those factories. It did. It did. Mm -hmm. Some went to uh, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, and down there both in New York. Mm -hmm. Sure did. And so now, what do you think now that Beaufort Fisheries is all getting torn down? Uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. And them factories up there, so the boys go to them factories, you go to anywhere. But now they ain't got no jobs, nowhere to go, so they do other things. Mm -hmm. Sure do. Yeah, so where does anybody work now? Do most people work in Havelock and Cherry Point? No, I've got a son working in Virginia. A lot of the boys working in Virginia. Oh, for the Reedville factory? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, your son's working up there? Huh? Your son's working up there? Yeah. How about that? Yeah, sure is. When you worked at the factory a long time ago? Yes, ma'am, down at Buffalo. What was your job at the factory? Bailing fish. Could you tell, describe what the fish baler does? He got a rubber hose in his hand. <laughs> it's 75 pound pressure on it. And he turns it on. And he washed fish into the bottom of them, and he got a hose to suck them up to the elevator and dump them in the elevator, and the elevator sends them on up to the cooker. Okay. So were you in the fish, the um, raw box? No, ma'am. In the fish hole on the boat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, I have been in the raw box. Yeah. Okay. Show sure did. So what was your favorite job in the whole business? In the fall business? In the whole business, what was your favorite job? Fishing. Mm -hmm. Fishing. Yeah, it was fishing. Did you ever get into a scary situation out there on the water? No, ma'am. I've been in some storms, too. Uh -huh. Sure is. Got in one. The door says it would sink right at the Beaufort Bar. I never forget it. She was loaded with fish. And it come a sixty mile an hour wind. And the boats were loaded with fish and she couldn't make it. She was an old boat. She went down. Nobody got drowned it though. What year was that? About um, I believe if I don't make the mistake, 
using a fifth note about 49, about 49. And were you out there too at the same time? Yes, ma'am, on a Miss P. Oh, I, I was just looking at a picture of that boat. Miss P. Mm-hmm. If I'd had known, I'd have brought it to show you. Yeah, they got they had it down there. The boat this way. She, you know where that boat was made at? Where? Oh, there at the Mohead. Used to be a factory over there. I worked at it too. Right there at Mohead Bridge, you used to catch a small boat and go across to that island. And that's where she was made over there on the island. On that island, on over by the high rise bridge. Yeah, that's right. That on um, Phillips Island, they used to call it Starvation Island. Yeah. They built that's a right. boat out there. They made, huh? They built boats out there, too? Yeah, they built her over there. I didn't know that. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. That was a beautiful boat. She was a nasty thing to work on, dude. Why? She was uh, built round bow, to, you know, bow was built round on her. Uh-huh. Whenever it come a sh- sea, she started jumping, and you, they said, they hang on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You get hurt on that boot if you wasn't short. <laughs> yeah, you would. Mm-hmm. Did you ever get seasick? No, ma'am. Never been seasick. Yeah. Been in some tough stuff, too, I'm telling you. I was on the Taylor's Creek in a 60 mile an hour wind in that uh, sound. Really? Yeah. Sure was. Yeah. Did you ever fear that you wouldn't make it back? No, ma'am. Never had that in mind. Mm hmm. She wouldn't. A boy used to work with me to call Walla Green Go Dead. He was on the, uh, this here smaller boot, Jimmy had. And uh, he worked with us four years on that, yeah, four years. And uh, do you know he wore a hole right in that purse boot with his heels? throwing carts, and it was steel. Because he was going like this and pulling something? Yes, ma'am, and throwing the carts. My gracious. He was a powerful man. He just about saw your husband there, your boyfriend, but he was bigger. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was a bigger man. And what was his name? Walter Green Godet. Walter? Yes, ma'am. Is he passed now? Yeah, he's mm-hmm. been by, going by many years, honey. Mm-hmm. Been a long time. I think he died in fifty, didn't he? Yeah, I know. He died a long wow. time. Gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Do you remember back when um did were you fishing before the power block when you'd sing the songs to raise the fish? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us about that? Yes, ma'am. Uh fish with Lynn Murrow nineteen forty nine. Wasn't no power blocks then. We pull it by hand, we go to hook of the cake. We make sets, come on back back towards Southport, and finish up by hand. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah, that was hard work, but we did it. We were getting uh, 10 cents a thousand. Mm-hmm. 10 cents a thousand. Sure. And, and what role did singing play? Singing the shanties. Oh my lord. Old Lods of Jean and <laughs> <laughs> Captain got a Lucas and the mate got a forty four. Yes, uh Yes, sir, we used to sing them certainly. Did you always sing when you're pulling in the net or just in big sets? No, we'd sing on every set. We wait till we get alongside food we sing. Uh-huh. We'd we ever get a tight and everything when they come alongside and pick us up. Then that's when that song was start. Yeah. Is that because that's when you really had to raise them up? That's to, right. That's right. To pump them out or yeah, pick them right. out? Yeah, bail them out. They bail with a bail net then. The bail net. Yeah, with a long howl on it. And one man, to put her down there and the other man to hold the tail, what they call tail on. Shut up, you know, open up. Yeah, sure did. Mm. That's me. Who who led the the songs on your crew? Uh, Georgia boy. 
Nathaniel Jackson and uh, I think that's about all it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then once the power block came around, y'all quit singing. That's right. Did you miss the songs? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Them were good songs. Mm-hmm. They sure were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you, sometimes we'd pull up a million, a million of fish with our hand, with our bare hand, singing that song. Pull it so far and then you'd stop. And then a man would scrap that song. Then everybody would sit back whenever he get to the end of his verse, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure would. Gosh. Yeah, that's right. And, but uh, I build more fish on that Taylor's Creek than I did a boat. We built uh, 550,000. And uh, Jimmy told us he threw the tom, which that's what we personally did. We threw the tom back overboard. Still didn't know how many fish we had on the wreck of the Hawkins Island Channel. When he come back, after he went on a loader, and come back, we put five moves on him. Really? 550 more thousand on him. And that same net. How about that? He sure did. And so in that sound fishery, you were right there, usually Harker's Island Channel? That's right. And sometimes would you go around to Davis? Yeah, that's right. All the way out to the end of the river. Okay. Sure did. And how many sound boats were out there fishing with you about? There'd be Monk and uh, God, colored guy had one called Stanley the Sea Dog from who did it, little old sea factory. I remember that place. You do? They, they had the Hush Puppy. Yeah. Seacoast products yeah. or something. Yeah. You remember that? Town mm-hmm. Creek? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, we had them all. Mm-hmm. Lannisville. Lannisville. That's the boat I'm telling you about. That boy wore a hole right through a steel boat. Mm-hmm. Spread and revving. He was a big man. He weighed about 250, 260. Gosh. <laughs> Now he could pull. Uh huh, I bet. Yes, sir, he could pull, I'm telling you. Yeah. When you were fishing in the Sound, were there other commercial fishermen shrimping and setting nets and gill nets from Harker's Island? Yes, all? ma'am. Did they get in your way or did y'all no, live together? No, no, no. They stayed out of our way. Uh huh. Yeah. Them fish now would get close by them. They pulling, staring up the mud and stuff. They stayed off from them fish. The man hidden fish. Sure did. They were probably glad that y'all were getting the pogies out of the way of their gill nets. That's right. Sure were. It's hard to believe that there were so many boats back in there. It's so shallow there now. I Look. live I live right there on that straits area. On the straits? Yeah. I look across the water to Harker's Island. I live in Gloucester. You live right on the straits? Yeah. Look, you know who that patch of pond is at, out there in the streets? It's a patch of ponds. Long there on the other side of the bridge. Yeah. You know where that? That island? Yeah. Yeah. I used to fish all along there. That's Brown's Island. That's right. Yep. That's, I look at that every day when That's I walk right. down to the water. Uh-huh. Now, when you get by there, and by the, it, it used to be a big house set out there on the island. On the island. I don't know where it's there now, I know. There's a little cabin now. Is it? Yeah. And when you get right by it, that's where you start getting shallow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we got aground there one night. And uh, had to stay all night long. It was real cold, too. And Monk, he went in and got his fish out and come back to pull us off. And when he pulled us off, we almost sunk. Hit deep water. Had two men on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, sure did. Was that the Taylor's Creek? No, that wasn't Taylor's Creek. Lennoxville? Lennoxville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, I don't think she'd cat but a hundred and fifty or sixty thousand. Was she a wooden boat? No, steel. Oh, okay. Steel boat. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Sure was. Did you ever make a, a set in the dark? No, you wasn't supposed to set in the dark. Yeah. You get caught in the dark bailing them, though. You set when the sun was up, but 
Sometimes you have enough to hold you till dark. You build them in the dark. Mm-hmm. No, you weren't supposed to sit in the dark. Okay. Well, um, you know Bill. Um, Bill Lewis. Bill Lewis. Yes, I do. Yep. Sure do. Well, he told me that he was captain of one of the sound boats. He was. And that they did make a set in the dark once. It was early morning. <laughs> oh, my life. He would. Yes, ma'am. He would. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Bill. It was glowing. It was the um, phosphorescence in the water. And yeah. The fish were just glowing green. That's right. Yes, sir. I remember one morning, I was on that boat with Bill. I seen what I'm telling you about. And uh, he heard them fish up a crack in the water when he did for death before daylight. And uh, Bill said, boy, get in your boat. Told the captain on the boat, said, shine the light right on her. And sure enough, he went there and said, load her. <laughs> yeah, he did, yeah. Bill Lewis was a good fisherman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Sure was. One season there, I know he kept that factory going. Really? Yeah, it's up with that little boat. How about that? That little boat. Yeah, that's right. With no fish outside, the fish was on the inside. And the guys on the inside monking them, they wasn't good at fishermen as he was. They uh, weren't set, big sets. Bill was set on anything. When he knew anything, he had his boot loaded, gone, gone in. That's where he was. Hmm. Sure was. He was a good fisherman, I, but I don't think he was a good fisherman as Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy was a good fisherman. Sure was. And Jimmy passed away a few years ago, didn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He got hurt down there on that dock, didn't he? I don't know. I think he fell off on that dock, and one of these screws come through the dock, you know. Oh, my God. I think he sent it clean through him. Really? Mm-hmm. And he didn't ever recover all day. <sighs> he sure didn't. Mm. Yeah. That's a shame. You don't know how old Jimmy was, neither do you? I don't know. I don't think he was all that old when he Mm-mm. died. They wasn't. Alan Earl, where is he at now? Um, William Allen that worked at the factory? No. Alan Earl was the pilot on Taylor's Creek. Oh, I don't know. Bill might know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you miss seeing your old crew? Huh? Do you miss seeing your old crew? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I sure do. Yeah. yeah. I tell you who I saw the other day. You remember Elwood Willis? I sure do. Yeah. Elwood's still living. Yes. His his wife passed away about a month ago. Can he get around good? He's okay. He looks pretty frail. Do it. And I saw him in the Piggly Wiggly, and I, I don't know. There's there was a maybe it was. Does he have a son? I don't know if it was a son, but some there's a man kind of helping him. Mm-hmm. He looked pretty frail, but he's still alive. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Frazier, did you want to add anything about what it was like to be married to somebody in the fishing industry? Uh, he's all right. Uh-huh. He was all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went on down to uh, Louisiana. I fished from Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, Fernina, Florida, Delaware, Port Mama, and to... Yeah, I didn't fish the Long Island. Long Island, I worked at Fish Fact. Was all that for different companies? Yes, ma'am. On different boats? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you ever work for Harvey Smith? That's right, right there at Beaufort. Uh-huh. Ooh, there that big factory was. Yep. Worked there every winter till I got up with Jimmy. When I got up with Jimmy, that's where I knocked off from Ooh there. And so what did you do for Harvey Smith? Bill Fish. Oh, okay. Bill Fish. Mm-hmm. Sure did. Did you meet Mr. Smith? <laughs> he had to, you couldn't duck him. <laughs> you couldn't duck him. He walked right slow with his head right, right back. Uh-huh. He said, hey, boy, where you work at? Mm-hmm. You tell him, yeah, you're trying to take my money now. 
he always would say that. Yeah, said, Mr. Smith, let me have a dollar or two. I ain't got no quarter on me. He wouldn't have no money on me. Never did get no money on me. Mm-mm. Huh. Yeah, he wouldn't. I worked in this house right downtown there. And uh, me and a boy they called Fish Man. We in there, and the cobblers was in there working, and we had to sweep the floor and keep the floor clean and all. So I looked up there on a desk, around desk. I see a whole lot of parts sitting up there. You know them parts was full of gold and uh, paper dollars and $20, $100 bills. Pots? Yeah. She had them on, on a shelf in there. Around she had built right around next to the kitchen. Really? And boy, she didn't have nothing but money in there. It's like that. And she walked in there one morning and said, uh, Fish man? Fish man said, Yes, ma'am. Say, You see them parts? Fish man said, Yes, ma'am. Say, Don't you go there and take none of my money out. Fish man said, They don't belong to me. <laughs> oh my God. Mm-hmm. Huh. She sure did. Where was their house on Front Street about? I don't remember where their house was. Right, right down there on 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 Front Street, mm-hmm. but it's down to the end. Oh. Now about to the water. Uh-huh. Just about to the water. Okay. Sure. Huh. Yep. Yeah. So overall, would you say that um, the Manhattan industry was a good living? That's right. That it is. Yes, it was. Did your father work in the industry? Yes, ma'am. He sure did work there before I did. What did he do? Bill fished it like I did. Uh-huh. But he was a young man then. It was back then. 34. He went to New York, too. Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he didn't ever make it to go to Louisiana. Them places. Mm-mm. And how about your grandparents? No, I don't remember none. Of, no, they didn't build no fish. Uh, no, no. I don't guess it was no fish factories then. But there was a time when most everybody in this neighborhood, all the men would go work at the factories? Yes, ma'am. Or on the boats? Yes, ma'am. Sure would. And would y'all, so y'all would drive down there together? Yeah. So, uh, Sometimes I had a truck most all the time. And I'd haul all the boys down there. It'd be so cold sometimes I had cameras on the back. Let them get underneath the cameras and take my time going on the boat for morning like that. And it real cold. Somebody told me about a truck that had a house built on the back with benches. That's right. Is that the same truck or different? No. Okay. It's another one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did, you, did you ever ride on that truck? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. She sure did it long to the company, though. Okay. Yeah, you used to have... Benches on each side. One on this side, one on this side. That little alley to walk down the boy sit down on the benches to go down there. Uh-huh. Sure did. Get down. <laughs> it's okay. I was, I was inviting it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you would sometimes go fishing in the dead of winter when it was so cold? Yes, ma'am. What was that like? Whew. Your hands, I, my hands have been, that's the... Like I had boxing gloves on them, swell so big. Really got so cool. Did it swell up? Oh, yeah. My hands had swell so big, and they were cool till they be right red, and I couldn't shut them up. Just that cool. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we work in zero yellow day, out there. Right out there, both a bar, to the hook of the cape. I worked out there one day, man. That's the faces. You just pull that net up. She be just full of ice, just like glass. Really? That's right. It was just that cold. Fancy you pull up, see you have to stop her sometime when you pulling up. Pull her up sometime like that. Yeah. Ice will freeze in her before you can put your fingers back in them holes on her. Oh, my gosh. That was That's cold. right. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I have been so cold, I... You get to the plant for the, uh, put them ropes on the studs. I, I had to take my arms in, carry around there like that. Hands would be so still. 
That's right. Some of the boys would tell me and say, I was here today, I won't be here tomorrow. No they wouldn't either. Mm. It'd be too bad and they wouldn't come back. That's right. I just stuck right there. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, stuck right there. Did you ever think, I'm not coming back either, but then you'd come anyway? No, sir. I didn't <laughs> ever think I wouldn't go back. Huh? I have left. I had a six room home. Yeah, I built me a six room home right here where you see this trailer. Oh, uh huh. This land here belonged to me from road to road. From that highway over there to that road right there. Uh -huh. Clean cross over there. And uh, I built a six room home in here. And that stone come through here and tore all the pieces. Oh, no. Yeah, it did that last hurricane. Yeah. And uh, I went and got this trailer. No, that's nice. A nice trailer. Yeah, nice money, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure was. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I love the fish. Right now, I'm 81 years old. You are? I told you how old I was when I... I didn't do the math, though. Huh? You, told, you told me what year you were born in, but I didn't do the math. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm 81. 81 years old. You don't old. look at it all. Well, I'm 81. And I bet you I could fish right now. I bet you could, too. You look I like can. <laughs> yes, sir. Fish right now. What about your hands? Do you have arthritis or anything? Yeah, gout. Uh huh. So that's not from fishing. Uh, I figure it is. Oh, is it? I figure that gout she is. Uh huh. I take medicine for it all the time, but uh, these doctors down here couldn't give me nothing to cure it. So I got up with a doctor from Raleigh. He said, well, "Let me see your medicine bottle. You got it in your pocket?" I said, "No." I say, "But I bring it next time I come up here." That chair point. He said, "All right." So I'll be up here Thursday. Took that ball and carried up the term. He said, let me see. I get your turn. He said, what you take for this? I said, that gout, you see. Now, I'm going to tell you how I swell up. He said, throw that ball away. I threw it away. He gave me a little white tablet and a pink one, a big pink one. He said, you take this in. I don't care what you eat. Say, before you eat it, it won't boil you. He said, but now, if you don't take it, you're going to swell up. Now, my hands... I swear, yes, my wife. I, my hands are swell so big when that gout get me till they drop on me. Oh, really? Mm. Legs swell great big. I, pants are swell all over. That's right. Well, how old were you when you quit fishing? I believe I was 52. Mm hmm. You were young when you quit. Yeah. Sure was. Mm -hmm. You were older than that because I was on a boat with you 20... I went out on a boat with you 25 years ago. Yeah, but I was about 50 then. Okay. I was about 50 then. Uh -huh. Sure was. So did you quit when Jimmy quit? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I quit when Jimmy quit. Sure did. Yeah. I wouldn't go in another cabin, I'd quit. I'd say, well, I'm fished enough, I'll knock off. Well, could you tell me what made a good, you fish with a lot of different captains. Yes, ma'am. What made a good captain? He have a good crew of men, and he would go exactly where the plane tell him to go. And when he got there, he had men who worked. That what made a good captain, he had men that would work. And he had talked to them nice and tell them what he want done. That's right. Mm -hmm. Fish with Jimmy 16 years. I never had to say nothing to me wrong. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'd get upset, you know, when he catch them big sets of fish. Yeah, he, he'd get upset when he catch them big sets of fish sometimes. He'd get upset? Yeah, he'd get upset. Excited? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd he do? He started to holler, boys, handle that net easy. Let her come along slow. Do this, do that. Yeah, he would. Never say no cuss words to you, do or nothing like that. No bad words, no. No, sir. Mm -mm. And so what made a bad captain? 
Oh, uh, when they hard uh, fussing with the men and going on, mm-hmm. that's a bad cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they tell them, you ain't done what I told you. I told you to do this, not do it. And the boys be listening right there and do what they say, do. A whole lot of captains get like that. Now, I know a captain like that. I don't know who he living now. I know he's from Virginia, mm-hmm. Lynn Murrow. He was a bad captain. And whenever he could get a big set of fish, he'd cuss the boys and going on. Right then, when he got to the dock, if I was on there, I got off. If you want me to work, I work. You show me what to do, I do it. But if you start the fussing and going on, I will off. Yeah, I don't stand for us. All the state. Mm-hmm. I went up north 19 in uh, 65. I bought a brand new 65 food from Parker down there, right? Brand new. And I bought her that Friday, and I got to leave that Saturday. And I left Saturday morning with her, gone to New York, and I couldn't drive a fast because she'd stink if I drive a fast. Uh, I took my time from here to that New Jersey turnpike. And I got on that New Jersey turnpike for New York. I drove pretty swift. And gone on out on Long Island. That's another 110 miles. Mm. I drove pretty swift there. But I got out there and one day, these nets where you dip, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I was working to the factory, bailing fish like I tell you. And the boss man come around there, he said, Fred, I said, yes, sir. He said, I want you to go and uh, help me spray the net. I said, all right. So he said, you got high orders. I said, all right. So I took my orders, and when I got my orders, this tar ready to put in them nets. Uh, it stick your orders, coats and everything right up there like glue on them. Your oilers? Yes, ma'am. Is that oil skins? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he uh, told us boys I for spray the net and everything. I said, uh, do you give us any more oilers? He said, no. You wear them. I said, Captain, no, you can't wear them in a whole billion fish. He said, you wear them uh, there's the highway. I said, well, thanks. I said, meet me to the office this evening. I said, I got a brand new car, and I know the way. So, sure enough, me and him met down there, and Mr. Larry Clark, he was head of the whole factory. I walked up there on the porch, he said, what's the matter? I said, superintendent says he's for me. He said, for what? I said, it's them. He said, them Orleans, he uh, sprayed it that net in, he don't want to wear them back in the boat hole. He said, what's wrong with him? I said, come here, I'll show you. I went there and took him up and showed him. He said, no, we got plenty of orders. You get you some orders and go to work tonight. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. And ever since then, me and that superintendent didn't have no more argument or nothing. Uh, and which factory was that? Uh, Long Island, mm-hmm. Eastern Long Island. Mm-hmm. Sure was. Hmm. So when you were out on the boats, did you spend the night on the boats? Yes, ma'am, sometimes. What was that like? Nice, nice. Was that, it? Yeah. Sometimes we had fans on there, you know, when it get real hot. I was South Carolina on a boat, and uh, we had to have fans. We stay down there. We were fishing out of Florida then. Yeah, sure. And where, where were your bunks up? Forward. Down below. Down below. Down below. Down to the flue. Where the flue is. Was it up the below? Upside the house. Up the hangs up side the wall. Okay. And down two bunks up there and two down here like that. On each side of it. Okay, and then the the fish hole was back behind you. Exactly. Could you smell the fish while you're sleeping? No ma'am. Well that's good. No ma'am. No, couldn't smell the fish. Mm-hmm. We had them old big fans sitting in the floor, you know, and them portholes open. So we get a piece of screen, cut it out, and put it in them portholes. Mm-hmm. Lay right there, and man, you could sleep. Oh, that's nice. It sure was. Yeah. I love to stay on them boots. 
Uh -huh. I was on the boat and I got married. Were you? Yes, ma'am. I got married in 1950. Married that woman there in 1950. Mm -hmm. Sure did. How many children did you have? Ten eight. Really? <laughs> Ten? I had to work. <laughs> I had to work. Yes, ma'am, I had to work. <laughs> yeah. And how many of your kids ended up fishing or working in the factory? One of them. Just one out of ten. One of them, my baby boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's working in the factory right now. He's in Virginia right now. Sure is down at Reedsville. Well, that's nice. Do you ever get up there to visit? No, I don't go down there. Yeah. I've been down there. I used to work for Standard Products down there to that factory. And I worked for him about a year. And I uh, was uh, picking the boys' bonus and things up and getting more money on the bonus. And I drove from here to Virginia one time and looked to see had I made enough to get me bonus. But I hadn't missed it by three days. Oh. Sure did. Hmm. Yeah. Did your other kids, were any of your kids able to go to college? No, but they all went to the local college. Oh, the community college. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's nice. I got one uh, cook over there in Mohead uh -huh. Hospital. And I got one running the computer set up there in New Bern. And I got a grandson who went to college now. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, he finished last year. Yeah, sure did. Well, that's nice. You were able to make a good living to raise 10 kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but I had to work. Yeah. Yeah, I sure did. Yes, ma'am, I sure had to work. Didn't they even go lacking for nothing? Then nobody had to put me in to make them. You get them nothing neat. I worked for them. What I made, I gave it to them. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Do you ever dream you're still fishing? Sometime. Sometime. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, would, I tell you, I would fish right now if it was a fish boot and anybody would harm me. I don't guess they'd harm me though, I'm 81 years old. <laughs> gets around pretty good though. Yeah, it gets around pretty good. Yeah. How'd you get the nickname Poppy? Uh, My uncle. My uncle gave me that nickname. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them call me Ruffy. Yeah, call me Ruffy. But my real name is James Frazier. James Frazier. Yeah, James Abel Frazier. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Frazier, is there anything else you'd like to add? Is there any, um, you know, story, fishing story you'd like to share? No. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome. All right. Well, I'll turn this off. Okay. And I appreciate it. Okay. I'm going to come to your home, but I didn't know where you lived at. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>